Hey guys, my name is Lewis and welcome back to Premium Beats Resolve Editing Crash Course. This is episode 4, Audio Editing. Audio is often regarded as more important than visuals because an audio slip-up will definitely be heard, whereas a visual slip-up may go unnoticed. After all, how often do we notice a crew member in the corner of the frame until it's pointed out to us on a YouTube video? Now, for a year or so, we've had the addition of the Fairlight Audio page, which is a page dedicated to professional audio mixing. And not to be deceptive, but this isn't where our primary vocal point of the episode is going to be. The same goes for the Fusion and Color page. We'll touch upon some of the features found in those pages in our final chapter, but in all honesty, to give you a full rundown like we've done with the edit page, it might require its own series. Perhaps if you leave enough comments in the comment section, you may see a color grading series in 2019. Hopefully, this episode should be short and sweet, as if you followed along through episode 1-3 to three with a tentative focus, well, well done, you know how to edit audio. Because 99 out of the 100 features that can be performed on a video clip, from using the insert function, trim tools, or markers, can be performed exactly the same on audio clips. There are a few differences that we'll touch upon, but editing audio clips is exactly the same as editing video clips. However, there are a few audio features on the edit page we haven't covered, so let's look at those. But first, throughout episode 1-3 to three, we did touch upon a few audio related elements, so let's quickly recap. If you want the audio element from a video clip currently in the source viewer, you simply hover over the lower third of the viewer and then click and drag the audio waveform icon onto an empty audio track. On the timeline clips themselves, you can create a fade in or fade out by dragging the white handles inward, and you can increase or decrease the audio level by moving this bar up or down. And if you open the inspector, you can adjust the volume with slightly more control. If you find that your audio clips aren't showing audio waveforms, don't worry, it's more than likely that you've just turned off the waveform display. And to turn that back on, you hit the timeline view options and make sure the audio waveform icon is highlighted white. So, that's pretty much all of the audio aspects that we've previously talked about. Let's look at what audio features we can find here on the edit page. Underneath the video track area is of course our audio timeline. If you right click on a tracks header, you can change the audio track type from mono to stereo to 5.1 and so on. We can mute and solo the track. And I know this is a crash course aimed towards beginners, but I won't tell you which buttons do what. I'll leave that mystery up to you. However, if you do want to just mute the entire timeline, perhaps you're editing DSLR files with the onboard sound and you're creating a montage or something and the audio is too invading, you can click the mute icon here. And likewise, you can lower the volume with the slider. The difference between muting or lowering the volume using these tools is that it only affects Resolve as a software operation. It's a means of silencing the edit while you work or play back your material without having to mute Resolve from the OS volume bar it doesn't actually affect the audio levels on the timeline. If you were to render a video with the mute icon active, you'd still have audio on the rendered video. Now next to the mute volume button, we have a dim volume button. Now this is to be used when playing back your edit to someone and perhaps you want to talk about the edit but keep the, the edit playing. By hitting dim, the audio will slightly reduce in volume, allowing the edit to proceed at a more audible level. When clicked again, the audio will return to the normal levels. Again, this is non-destructive, and if you were to render your edit with this active, the audio would be rendered at the levels set by the track mixer, not dimmed. With the mention of the track mixer, let's have a look at how it functions on the edit page. As mentioned in our initial tour of the edit page, you open the mixer by hitting the audio mixer button here. If you initially only see a set of audio meters, you can click the ellipses and select mixer. If you had previously used an, an older version of Resolve, you may remember that we also used to have a clip mixer, but that feature has now been removed on the edit page. Here you will have an array of track mixers and the amount will correspond to how many tracks you have on the timeline. However, there will be an extra mixer called main, which can be used to increase or decrease the levels of the overall mix. There's no wizardry on how to use the levels. You simply push the fader knob up or down to increase or decrease the levels. And on the Premium Beat blog, we have a handy guide onto what levels you should have your different audio set to. However, you will see that the audio levels are color coded to give a visual indication of where your levels sit. Green is low, yellow is high, and red is very high with probable clipping. 
And regarding clip-in, which is essentially when your audio is too loud to be properly audible, the audio waveform on the clips themselves will give you a visual indication of when part of your audio clip is too high by changing the peaks to a lighter shade of the clip's color. Above the levels, we have a basic pan tool. Here you can pan the audio to appear as if it's coming from a different direction. There are two ways in which you can use this tool. You can click inside the box and then drag the blue square in the direction you want. So if I wanted my audio to appear as if it was coming from the rear and to the left, I would drag the blue square to the bottom left. Of course, to hear this exact pan, you would need a monitor setup or headphones that could properly hear the positioning of the audio. Otherwise, it would sound like it was just coming from your left. If you double click the pan square, you are greeted with a pop-out user display that offers further settings to fine tune this effect. If you ever needed to pan a specific clip, perhaps to have footsteps pass from left to right, you can do so by clicking on an audio clip, opening the inspector, activate the pan keyframe and animate as you see fit. Finally, on the mix panel, we have an EQ function. However, this specific button has been rendered useless within the latest version of Resolve. And to open it as we would used to, you need to head to the Fairlight audio page However, I will point out that we do have a basic EQ and pitch tools that can be found in the inspector, but these are clip based, not track based. On the edit page, the effects and transitions for audio are also found in the effects panel. Now, realistically, unlike star wipes and screen wipes and so on, there are only a few ways to transition audio and that's with a crossfade. So to bring one in onto the audio clip, you just drag and drop the transition onto an audio clip. And as the name states, the only area that you can position a transition is at the start or end of an audio clip in between the edit point. You can also press Ctrl T to have the default transition applied to the selected edit point. And this shortcut also works for the default video transition too. The audio effects work in a similar fashion. You find the needed effect in the effects library and just drag it onto the audio clip. You will be greeted with a pop-out user interface, which is unique to the effect. For example, when using reverb, we have a visualization of the reverb's effect on the frequencies of the audio signal. If you close the audio effects user interface, but later want to adjust the parameters of the effect, you select the clip, open the inspector, and you will find the effects adjustable properties at the bottom. If you want to open the effects user interface again, you just hit this button. This is pretty much covered the audio elements of the edit page. It's pretty simple, right? As I said, when you know how to edit video, editing audio is exactly the same. Now Fearlight, that page is a different beast altogether. It is designed for professional audio mixing. And I would suggest that after you've learned the basics, perhaps start to make your way over to that page and see what things do. Of course, you don't need to go unguided. We already have two video tutorials for the Fairlight page on how to set an ADR session up and how to create submixes. We also have a ton of write-ups on the blog, of course. So that's it for episode four. In episode five, we will be covering delivering your content. Until next time.